Welcome everyone. In this session, we'd like to cover our experiences on transforming open source into live service with Docker. <laughs> Sung Ho and I are both working at Common Computer, where we are building a solution for making open source more useful. If you have any questions during this session, feel free to contact us at emails mentioned here. Okay, let's get started. In this session, you will learn status of Docker utilization in open source communities, common issues when using Docker in their open source projects, best practices of Dockerizing open source projects. Lastly, you will learn how to deploy live service from open source projects and why it is useful. Let's take a quick look at Docker adoption status for open source projects. According to our research, 7% of 200k popular projects contain Docker-related files. The way we got this number was, first, we crawled GitHub projects over 50 stars, which was 210k. Then, we counted GitHub projects, which includes file name Docker file or Docker compose, which was 15k. Among the projects with Docker file, we categorized them into three types. First, web types, which export support and run servers. Second, binary job types, which can be run to complete using Docker run. Third, ML types, whose repositories are tagged with ML keywords. Later, we will show you different learnings from each type when Dockerizing and productionizing. Now, let's move on to the next topic. Why is it always hard to run software made by other developers? Let's identify problems with an example. Suppose, I want to make an API that can generate random images. Since I don't want to build it from scratch, as always, I start with Google it. Here, we can see a few promising results. Uh, Oblivion Sans Random Image API at the first result, Dobby's Random Image API, and so on. <laughs> when I clicked the first result, it was written in PHP. Since I have very little experience in writing PHP, I want to try another one. The next result is written in JavaScript, which is my favorite language, and even has a demo link available. However, when you click the demo link, it is broken. This is a typical case for open source projects because the author may not be able to maintain the service as long as the code is shared. The third result looks promising. Written in Node.js, which I am familiar with, it kindly explains how to build and run code in readme file as well. But when I actually tried npm build, it fails badly. So one does not simply make your code work. In summary, every developer wants to run code right away, but there are several hurdles that need to be overcome. First, if you are not familiar with the language, you may want to skip. Second, if the build fails, you need to do something to fix it. Third, even after a successful build, it may not run for the various reasons. The runtime environment is simply not the same as the one who shared the code. Lastly, if I want to bring up service on the cloud, I need to start worrying about where to deploy, and how I can afford the server cost. Docker can solve many of the problems mentioned above. Docker is portable, so anyone who has a Docker can reproduce the sharer's result without worrying about the underlying runtime environment. Also, performance is reasonably good. Docker also gives you agility you can deploy an application many times a day 
and productionize right away without changing much from the local environment. Docker isolates resources quite well, so it's fine for you to run several Docker containers on the same cloud or machine. Lastly, microservice architecture can be implemented intuitively by con containerizing and connecting many small images. Remember three types, web, binary job, machine learning, we categorized it earlier. Let's go over each example. The first example we have is easy appointments, an example for web server. The second example is shell check, which is a shell script static analysis tool. The last example is detect run to Facebook's object detection and segmentation machine learning library. Thanks, Minion. In this demo session, I'm going to show a side-by-side -side comparison about how easy it is to execute necessary commands when the project is dockerized. First, I will show you how to build and run the easy appointment project without using a docker. The right side of the video shows the entire command list needed for this project. Easy appointment project requires Apache, PHP, and MySQL, which is called APM stack. The process of installing APM was very long and difficult. I had to enter more than 20 commands. Nevertheless, an error occurred in the end, and I failed to learn easy appointment. On the other hand, the process of learning the easy appointment project using Docker went really smooth. The demo video is 5 minutes long, but most of the time was spent waiting for installation of the Docker and Docker Compose. The only change I made was the app URL environment variable. Then I ran the docker compose up command and it just worked. You can see its appointment is launched successfully on the web. The second example is about localizing a binary job type project. Here you can see the shell check project is implemented in Haskell. To compile the Haskell project, you need to install Kabal, which is package manager dedicated to Haskell. This kind of unfamiliar package manager is often a hurdle for utilizing open source project. Even if I don't know how to use Kabal Package Manager, I was able to get the same result using Docker. The only thing I had to do was using the Docker-V option to mount the directory where the shell script is located to be tested. The last example is about localizing a machine learning type project. As you expected, machine learning projects require complex libraries and hardware settings with GPU. Building and learning machine learning projects using Docker is easier because you don't have to think too much about hardware dependency. Docker also supports special hardware-dependent development environments such as NVIDIA GPU support.
Last year, we hosted the Open Resource Hackathon in Seoul, 2019. 33 open source developers were gathered in this event and introduced their projects with each other after dockerizing and productionizing the solution. According to the preliminary survey, 15% of the participants had no experience in using Docker. It took around 1 to 2 hours to go through the Docker tutorial, which is a reasonable time for experienced developers to learn new concepts. With our help, most hackathon part participants, including Docker newbies who had never used Docker before, were able to Dockerize open source projects and deploy open source projects as a live service and share them with each other in less than 5 hours. It was very encouraging to see how easily open source projects can become live service using Docker. We found a few common issues while helping developers Dockerizing. First, some developers had an unknown fear to learn a new thing, even if it is simple enough to learn. Second, installing Docker on their laptop took a significant amount of time although it didn't cause much trouble. Third, pulling Docker images from Docker Hub took a bit of time, especially for large images, which is quite common for machine learning projects. We also experienced trouble from broken images in Docker Hub, and developers were confused when the app cannot have anything in a container but required external file dependencies such as uh, loading external ML models. We wanted to make this process easier and develop a de deployment solution for an open source project, iNights. iNights simplifies the journey from source code to live service. It wraps the process of cloning, dockerizing, and deploying into, into one button. Let's take a look at a quick intro video. Just like earlier, here we prepared three demos for iNight. First one is You Got It, a very interesting machine learning project that changes your selfie to anime style. Stanza, a Python NLP open source project. Lastly, COVID-19 dashboard demo. Let's watch the overview of You Got It. Do you like animation? The animation industry has always been dominated by two countries, America and Japan and their renowned anime style. But imagine, what would Disney characters look like if they were drawn like Japanese anime characters? And what would Disney's real life action characters look like if they were turned into anime characters? Well, now we can find out using Ionize and the open source project, You Got It, which lets you turn people into anime characters. So let's get started. Okay. Sungo will explain how to ionize you got it from here. Now I will show you how to ionize the you got it open source project. First, copy the you got it GitHub URL and paste it into the ionize input form. Press the get start button. You will need to go through the login process. This is the page to enter additional information for the co image. Fill the form and press the deploy button. It takes about 5 
to 10 minutes to finish deployment. After deployment is successful, you will be able to access the URL. If I open this URL, I can see a simple interface to translate the selfie to enemy. If I put my picture here, you can see my profile picture has changed to enemy style. Let's take a deeper look at what's happening when the deploy button is pressed. When the user enters an open source project URL and click the deploy button, first, the ionize API server will check whether the repository has a proper Docker file. Then, API server requests build Docker image action to the build server. Before deployment, Docker image is checked whether it has GPU signal with the docker inspect command. You got it docker image has NVIDIA flag, so API server requests it to be deployed to GPU cluster. The Kubernetes master of the GPU cluster generates a pod in the GPU node. Currently, GPU node has four GPUs. When all GPU nodes are full of pods and can no longer be deployed, auto scaling settings are set to add a new GPU node. The pod that you are deploying stores a pre-trained model that you created in the persistent volume. So you don't need to create a pre-trained model each time. When the deployment is complete, endpoints are created so that you can easily access the pods. You can use Ugari service through the endpoint shown through the demo. The second example is the Stanford NLP project with pre-trained neural models supporting 60 plus languages. The deployment process is not so different from the previous uh, Ugari case. Check the built Docker image with the Docker inspect command and in this case there is no NVIDIA flag. The Stanza Docker image is deployed uh, in the non-GPU cluster. Lastly, let me introduce the COVID-19 projects. COVID-19 is now spreading around the world. Today in China, the reported number of cases rose to nearly 81,000 total infected people in the country. In Korea, we have over 7,000 people infected with COVID-19. So now the whole world is starting to face this crisis situation with this virus. So that made us ask the question, what can we do to solve this problem? As software developers, we decided to use open source projects to try and develop something that can help uh, mitigate against this crisis. Uh, let's take a look at COVID-19 dashboard project. Uh, interestingly, there are three different open source projects involved in this project. First. John Sokim's data is regularly collected and pushed to GitHub. And second, the backend project deployed by an open source developer, Leon, provides a RESTful API. Lastly, front end is deployed by another open source developer, Sopol, uh, provides dashboard. As you can see from the COVID-19 examples, uh, it is totally possible to connect different open source projects once it can be successfully deployed using Docker. We are dockerizing and ionizing 130 open source projects so far and want to invite more open source projects. Once we have enough solutions connected with each other, we can call this as an open microservice architecture and ex expects community collaboration increases dramatically. In conclusion, we recommend open source developers to dockerize their projects and make them more useful. Dockerfile can be a friendly guide for those who do not have much knowledge in runtime environments you are using. We also want to promote developers to have a run on ionize button in their repository so that other developers can easily integrate the service with yours to build a greater collaborative network.